Okay, let's give you guys some more practice. So determine if this series will converge or if it will diverge. So press pause and have a go. Okay, so to do this, there are at least two ways of doing this. Uh, one is the uh, direct comparison test. The other one is the, uh, the limit comparison test. So the direct comparison test is this. So we've seen this before. The limit comparison test is this, which we've already seen before. So hang on. So with the uh, with the direct comparison with the direct comparison test, you uh, you've got this thing here, and then uh, and then you you try and trap it be below something. You try and trap it below something. If if, um, if this thing here, if the summation of this thing, which you know about, let's say for example um, n to the power of three, uh, if if this converge, then this will will then this will also converge. This is a direct comparison test. So the direct comparison test is when you, you compare it directly. The limit comparison test is when you consider the limit. So the limit comparison test is when, when this thing here heads towards infinity, uh, it's going to act as, as, um, as, as this. Hang on. Because you, you can pretty much ignore this negligible one. Because as n heads towards infinity, this one is going to be next to nothing. So you, you can consider it as this. And then uh, square root of square, that will be uh, n times n, that will be 1 over n squared. So, so as n heads towards infinity, this thing here will act as 1 over n squared. So the limit comparison test is, um, is, is when, you, well, when, when you set this to be a n, and then you set this to be b n, and then get a n divided by b n and work out the limit. I, I will explain this as we go along. So let's, let's, let's try and do the um, limit comparison test. So the limit, sorry, let's try and do the direct comparison test. So the direct comparison test is you start out with this. So you start out with this, hang on. n and then root n squared plus 1. Uh, this will be less than or equal to 1 over. Now if you look at this, if you look at this bubble here, if you make this bubble smaller, then, uh, then, then the new thing will be, will be bigger than the old thing. For example, hang on, bear with me. Let's let's concentrate on on making the denominator smaller. So let's let's just concentrate on making this smaller. You see, if I remove this one here, it will be smaller. So hang on. So if you remove the one, if you remove the one, then this whole thing here will then be bigger uh, than than this thing here, bigger or equal to. It's strictly bigger, but but I do have the right to um, to use bigger or equal to, uh, because if if you look at this, hang on. If you look at 1 over, let's say, 8, if you make the denominator smaller, which we did by, by, by taking away that number 1, um, then, then if, if you, let's say, if you take away, if you take away 3, then, then you could say that this thing here is bigger or equal to this thing here. So, so you're, you're making the denominator smaller, so therefore this, therefore the whole thing here will be bigger than this whole thing here. Now, um, well, let's, let, let's look at this here. Um, uh, hang on, this will be equal to, equal to, well this thing here is like n, and then you times n, so it's 1 over n squared. So, uh, so, so we can actually say this, hang on, we can actually say, um, 1 over n squared is bigger or equal to, to, uh, to this thing here. So now, if you, if you do this, hang on, if you sum up everything, this, this is what we're trying to investigate. This is what we're trying to investigate and we know nothing about. But then we know something about this. We know that this is going to converge because P series. Um, this power here is bigger than, than 1, so, so we know it's going to converge. So if this converge and this always being bigger or equal to this, um, so, so this thing here converge, well, this is always bigger. This thing here is always bigger than this thing, so this thing here must converge. Okay, so, so that's a direct comparison test. The direct comparison test is when you compare it directly. Now let's look at the limit comparison test. So the limit comparison test, hang on. So the limit comparison test, make sure a n is always bigger than, uh, than zero. Make sure that b n is always bigger than, than zero. So hang on. So, uh, with the, with the limit comparison test, you start out with this. You start out with this. Consider what happens as n heads towards infinity. As n heads towards infinity, this thing here will act as this. It will act as this as n heads towards infinity. So, uh, so we should use this. 
we should set this to be AM, we should set this to be our BM. So now if you look at this, hang on, we should set it to be our AM, we should set it to be our BM. Make sure that AM is always bigger than, than, uh, than zero. So hang on, make sure AM is bigger than zero. Well, in, in the realm from one to infinity, uh, this whole thing here will always be positive. So that's good. Uh, in the realm from one to infinity, this will always be positive. So going back to here, you should you should check that it's always uh, bigger than zero. So this this is good. Bn is always bigger than zero. So so when it comes to the limits comparison test, we all we always need to compute this value here, the limit of an divided by bn. So we need to compute that value. So hang on, we need to compute the value an over bn. Well an is this, and then you you divide by bn. That's the same as you times in the reciprocal. Remember bn was this earlier. So you times the reciprocal, uh, and then tidy this up, and then it's blah blah blah. This value here equals equals one. So so remember our value equals one. So going back to here, going back to here, uh, we just computed this value here, and it's e it equals to one. Now one is uh, one is bigger than zero. We just compute. Hang on, bear with me. We uh, we've just computed this value here. And it turns out to be it turns out to be one. Now the number one here is bigger than zero. You see our value we just computed this and it's it's not one, so we can forget about sorry, it's not zero. So you can forget about this. We've just computed this value here and it's not infinity. So you can forget about you can forget about this, you can forget about this. So this is our situation here. Because we've just computed we've just computed this value and it equals one, and one is bigger than zero. So this is our situation here. Now our situation says that um, uh, both BN and AN act in the same way. They both converge or they both diverge. Well, we, well, we, we know that 1 over uh, N squared, we, we know that this thing is going to converge. We know that this thing is going to converge. Therefore, this thing must also converge. So hang on. So just a recap. So this is our BN here. This is our BN here. We know this BN is going, we know that this BN here is going to converge. Therefore, our AN must also converge. Okay? So, yeah. So, the, so, so we know that our BN converge. Because we, we, we're trying to investigate this. We know nothing about this, uh, this thing here. But we do know something about BN. We know that it converges. Therefore, this thing converge. Well, then it's saying that both must both must converge or both must diverge. Well, this thing converged, therefore this must also converge.